I only have five minutes here, so I'm just going to do numbers six, seven, and eight. And I'm going to start with number six, which is simpler. Um, and then I'll, I'll show you the work for number six, and then we'll talk about seven and eight. Okay, so just like before, I'm going to have an inequality. I'm going to imagine that I'm just solving an equation. So I just did the opposite of multiply. The lights went out. <laughs> the opposite of multiply is divide. So I divided both sides by 8, and then 56 divided by 8 is 7. And all I did was bring down the inequality. So um, that's the way we solved the last one. And again, I don't like the boxes all the time. I just ignore them. So my solution, I think it is um, m is less than or equal to 7. And when I do my check, notice that I check it as an equation because that's how I solved it. I solved it like an equation. So I do my check as if it was equal. But then I want to check my um, graph. I want to check my inequality because really this is the solution and I might be wrong. So let me check. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, choose the number here, 7. I'm going to put that in the center. And then I'm going to put a number greater than 7 on the right, a number less than 7, 6, five, put 5 over here. And then at 7, since it's equal to, I put a closed circle, less than goes to the left, and I put it over here. Now, if this is true then, I should be able to take, um, I have to be careful with this, I should be able to take 5 and put it into the original inequality, because before I was taking shortcuts, but this is really important. So I'm going to take 5, a number that I've sh that's part of the shaded area. I'm going to put that in my original inequality. So 8 times 5 is 40. Is 40 less than or equal to 56? Yes. So I shaded it in the correct way, and my solution is fine. Now let's see what happens when we do number 8. So I'm doing number 8 next. I'm going to come back to number 7. So number 8, I have a negative 7x is greater than 56. And now, this time I'm going to divide by negative 7, divide by negative 7, and I'm bringing down my inequality. So I have x, and I have negative 8. Okay, so then, when, and I know you can't see the number line here, but when I have the number line, and I put the negative 8 on the number line, and I put something that is greater than negative 8, so over here would be 0 because it's the negatives. So over here would be like negative 16. Okay, so open circle, and then I think I graph to the right. I think it's greater than. But this time, when I put this in here, if I put 0 in here, I'm going to think, yeah, I'm right. 0 is greater than negative 8. But let me put 0 all the way back in my original problem. If I do negative 7 times 0, is that greater than 56? Well, negative 7 times 0 is 0, and 0 is not greater than 56. So that means that I must have been, um, I must be, have my arrow going the wrong way. Because if I think about it, in order to be greater than 56, in order to multiply 7 by something so that it's greater than positive 56, I must be multiplying it by a negative. So the numbers that are negative, there's some numbers that are negative. They're over here on the left of negative 8, like negative 16. Well, what happens when I do negative 7 times negative 16? Is that answer greater than negative, is that answer greater than 56? So that's 112. Is 112 greater than 56? Yes. So this is the way I should be shading. Really, my solution is um, less than negative 8. Well, why did it flip? Well, we learned in our lesson today that whenever we divide or multiply by a negative, that's going to cause this inequality to flip. So once I do that, I'm going to have to change the direction of my inequality to get the right solution. So that's why it's actually less than negative 8. Thanks.